Hello, I'm Rachel Jones for the Finance News Network. Joining me today from Renogen is Managing Director and CEO Stefano Morani. Stefano, nice to see you again. Thank you for having me. Now, first up, Stefano, you've just announced prospective helium resources of 344 billion cubic feet. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, this is uh, the culmination of around 18 months worth of work and, uh, and the results are incredibly encouraging, uh, especially from an exploration perspective. Uh, up to now, we've uh, we've not yet had confirmation as to what the volume of helium generated underground was, um, nor what the total potential of the field was. Um, now, this report really has helped us dig in, isolate um, the amount of helium that was generated, um, as well as more importantly, isolating what the source of the helium was. So we so we've got a much more concentrated effort now when it comes to uh, to exploration for for future reserves and uh, and resources. And to put these results into context, how does this compare to other global helium reserves? So look, 344 billion cubic feet is a huge amount of helium. Uh, to try and put this number into context, um, the world consumes somewhere in the region of around 6 billion cubic feet per annum. So if we were to supply 100% of world demand, 344 billion cubic feet would be almost six decades worth of supply. Now, I, I need to caveat that's that's obviously not to say that uh, that all of that helium is there. It's this is this is merely just a uh, an upper end estimate as to how much helium has been has been generated and what could potentially be recoverable. But but we're certainly not expecting that uh, that that will culminate into reserves. But uh, but still, it's a, it's a big enough number that even only a fraction of that would be would be huge for us. And how will this translate into proven reserves? So in order to, uh, to take this and, and to turn it into proven reserves, a, a huge amount of work has been done. And, and we started this work probably somewhere in the region of over a year ago. So we've been, we've been accumulating a huge amount of data. Um, more importantly, we've been, we've been isolating the faults and the fissures where the gas is being carried up to the surface. Um, we've mapped out those faults and fissures with a, with a fair degree of accuracy and we've identified somewhere in the region of 900 kilometers worth of uh, gas bearing fault line structures now. Um, that combined with the work that, uh, that was done regarding the isolation of uranium and thorium, how much was there, um, combined with the work that was done by the University of Edinburgh with regards to calculation of the generation of helium, um, combined with obviously the well that was drilled in December last year, and this upcoming well, all of this is being fed through to uh, to Sproul, and Sproul will now come up with uh, with their their updated reserves and resources, which which hopefully all things being equal, we're hoping to uh, to be able to announce sometime in September. Now to the drill program. What have you learnt about the best way to access the helium? So, <clears throat> what I've what I've mentioned before is that we don't have a conventional reservoir. The gas comes up to the surface via faults and fissures. Um, that means that um, that we're now busy testing our uh, our, uh, our first kind of inclined well, um, and the the principle over here is that these faults and these fissures are near vertical, and uh, that means that if you're drilling in at a 45 degree angle, your probability of hitting the fault and the fissure is significantly higher than if you were drilling a vertical trying to hit a vertical. So. Um, and the most important thing about this upcoming well is going to be the efficacy of the uh, of the theory to see whether or not it actually strikes gas or not. Um, you know, we, we know that the gas is there. We know that the helium is there. Um, you know, just to reiterate, this is in the low helium section of the field. So we're anticipating helium of anywhere between, call it, 2 to 4% in this uh, in this upcoming well. But but the most important thing is that uh, is that this is the proof of concept to say that you know, intersecting these vertical faults is uh, is is much more effective by coming in with an inclined well, and that's that's what we're trying to prove. And to the last question now, Stefano, is there anything else you'd like to add? So <laughs> helium is obviously an incredibly important element, um, not only from, from a scientific perspective, uh, in terms of research, rocket launches, um, manufacturing of electronics and, and all of the daily comforts. Um, for instance, this, this interview would not have been possible without helium, um, with all of the hardware that's required. but. Yeah, from a medical perspective, it's also important, not only because of oncology with, uh, with MRIs, but also now with, uh, with COVID, um, the use in respirators in a, in a gas called Heliox. Um, and it's, it's with that in mind that, that we see this as a very encouraging development. And the reason that we see it as an encouraging development is because 
we believe that there is sufficient helium in this field and at high enough concentrations for us to be able to produce a meaningful amount in our phase two. And our hope is that, um, is that this project will be able to bring a sufficient volume of helium online in, in the near future that will, um, that will try to reverse the, uh, the short supply uh, of helium in the near term and try and bring some stability back into the helium market. Stefano Morani, thanks so much for the update. Thank you very much.